I am back. We're live. I'm back. It's winning Wednesday. Winning is all about being number one, okay? No time for number two or three. Only number one. Winning. Winning Wednesdays. Who doesn't love to win? We're all winners, right? Anyhow, I'm back. Ready for another spectacular live with an amazing, amazing lady. Amazing guest. I'm just going to wait till everybody gets on here. I'm going to send her an invitation. Thank you very much for for joining for joining us. I just sent her a request. So I'll just give it a few minutes for our followers to come on come on the live. Thank you for joining me. If you want to put in the chat where you guys are from, where you're following from, it would help all the other followers. Just want to get a an idea of where everybody is from. There is the incredible <laughs> Tessa Marie Schillingford, right? Incredible, wow. <laughs> incredible, amazing. You're amazing. I'm amazing. We're all amazing. We're incredible, right? I know. So what's up? It's an honor to have you here. I wasn't sure if you were adding me or I'm adding you, but it doesn't matter. It's, a, it's all wonderful. I, it doesn't matter to me. Nothing frightens me. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Um, listen, I'm, bl I'm blessed. We're all blessed. I'm honored and privileged to have you on this live and to be able to get to spend some time with you, to get to know you, and to ask you questions and pick your brain. Thank you. Yes. No, thank, thank you. So <laughs> uh, I'm just giving it a couple, I'll just give it a few seconds just to see everybody come on. There's, yeah. I, I came on earlier just to do a, a sound check, video check, because I just upgraded my phone. I want to make sure the phone, everything's right, you know, for this. What you have? What you have? An iPhone 12 Plus? Yeah, I went from I had a six, and for the last week, it actually wasn't. It was going in and out of working and not working. It was really horrible. And I finally said, "Okay, enough. I gotta, I gotta get the 12. Enough." You know, so it, it. I can tell you, it's incredible. The, the video, the resolution on the video and camera is sure. well worth it. Don't tell me that's too tempting. I have an eight plus. It's okay. Yeah, it's too. It's, it's, it's okay. You know, <laughs> yeah, for, you know, I don't normally like to go with the brand new things because I like to let them wait, wait you know, wait out the, the kinks, yes. you know, and, and then we can, I'll get the updated version one year behind. I'm uh -huh. good with that. I don't, I'm not one of those guys that has to have the latest of everything and be caught up in that craze, you know? Yes. So, I, you know what, I, it doesn't matter to me. I like, I like, I love gadgets. Yeah, yeah. So, so well, I jump onto them, you know. Well, guess what? I mean, you're you're figuring out really quickly how to use Instagram, right? Ah, uh, well, yeah, it's been a journey. <laughs> ah, it's it's a journey. It's a journey for all of us. I've been uh, about a year now, and I remember my first time. It was, it was quite the uh, experience. <laughs> Instagram is very different. The, the IG Live is, and of course. Technology is it changes. They change it without any reason. They just change it. They change. They change. You know what's incredible is that they change it, but they don't. You don't know unless you follow other people. It's not like they have tutorials. It's not like they, someone comes on and updates you and says, "Hey, let let us walk you through this new feature." Like you know, last night I was on the live. It came on late at night because I happened to see somebody else's live. And there was three people on the line. Then, so I was, I was like trying to figure out how I could do it. I couldn't figure it out. I get on today and I wake up and I get on, on, on my lives and I see four people were on live at once. So I was like, it went from three last night to four today. I said, well, I, I can't wait to use that because then we could put three, four people on the live and we can go back and forth and share ideas and, you know, map. It's like, it's like a mastermind. Yeah, it's something like Zoom, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, it's good. It's a it's a it's a mini Zoom, and you can get three or four people collaborating, and you know, and sharing ideas, and 
and working together. Brain I'll go tell you that because I, I will try. I will have to try something like that. You know, I'm going to. I'll pull my hair out, which I cut. But... Listen, if you try, you figure it out. Let me know because <laughs> I'll I'll join you on your three or four way because I think it's, I think it's awesome. It's amazing. You know, you know, in these times specifically because we're being uh, limited to our socializing. And it's not stopping. And what's great about social media is it's not stopping. There's no limitations to socializing through social media. That's the power. It is. But a lot of people are afraid of it because they say, oh, I'm not on Instagram, like a badge of honor. I'm not yeah. on Facebook. It's like, I am not. I like, you know, it's so, it's bad. But I, I try explaining, well, it's what you put in. You know why? Because of the misconceptions around social media, there's always everything that's new to people. There's good and bad. But what, what, what do most people fixate on is the negative. You know, social media, like I didn't even realize I was told social media means social, to be social. But if you think of the, the ideology behind social media, most people think, oh, I need to be afraid of social media. It's danger. Like all these limiting, well, all these limiting beliefs, right? But it's true for them because perhaps they heard that somebody put some pictures on and they got fired from a job or somebody took their email. So listen, listen, I get, I get, I get funny messages all the time. I got funny DMs today. I added more member. I was on somebody's live. I got a whole bunch of people add me and I had some funny messages. I screened them. I, I, I deleted them. So that's part of life. It's like anything, right? Cool. You were, you were in the banking industry for many years, right? So mm -hmm. you're, you're used to screening and, and going through people's, you know, figure, fig, figuring out who's who and what's what, right? And sometimes you just don't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's part of life. It's who we are. We have to get, we have to get conditioned, conditioned and deconditioned at the same time and understand how we can take, utilize the good of it and, ben and be beneficial to others, right? I think mm -hmm. your platform and what you're speaking about, like you're taking... Like I was explaining this to someone the other day because they said you're on in, you're on lives a lot. You're doing a lot of things. I said, yeah, but I'm not doing anything negative. I'm trying to spread positivity and 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 inspiration and motivation. I'm I'm not using it for ill will purposes. You know that's the difference. Some people are a little bit. They have misconceptions or perceived notions regarding what Instagram or what social media is really. What's the purpose of it, right? It's a platform. It, they, yeah. they, you know, when they didn't have a platform, they used to go to the to Hyde Park in London and, and stand on the chair or on the bench and speak. That was their platform in the time of Shakespeare. And, and right, right. And a lot of things were. Platform. Yeah, before COVID, we were we were. I was in my car going to conference to conference, standing up, introducing myself, giving my you know thirty second one minute pitch who I am. Now. I gotta go on. I gotta be on live. I gotta speak to people through social media. It's it's a whole, you know, it's, it's a whole pivot. It's a whole shift. I, I, it's challenging for me in some cases, but I do love it. I, I enjoy doing it. So. You, you know what? You it's like anything, uh, Tessa. You I mean, you're a big proponent and a believer of this. The more th more times you do something, the more comfortable you get at it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. It wasn't comfortable for me when I started doing lives. It wasn't comfortable coming on here. I didn't even know how to do lives. I didn't even know what I was doing, but I just kept doing it. And I said, okay, my goal when I heard Gary Vee, I said, okay, I'm not great at, at social media. I'm not great at lives. My goal is I'm going to do 100 lives. And by the 100th time, I think I should be pretty comfortable. Now, I don't know. I must have done, I don't know, 20, 30. I don't know how many lives I've done, but I'm, I'm now it's like riding a bike. It's like anything, right? <laughs> That's great. I, I do them every day purposely because I, it's a challenge to me. Yeah. Uh, and I love the consistency of doing it at the same time. It's not difficult to find my topics. 100%. If people and, hand me the topics on a platter. I, I get topics walking on the street. Yeah. I and you're, talk, topics listening. Yeah. So, and I, you're a woman of challenge. So I like I, I spent some time. Hi, Rosie. Hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us. Everybody's there. My sister was trying to get in, but I think she was trying to get in under my go looking for me. I'm I see. I see. Well, let's <laughs> hope. Let's let's hope everybody. Let's pray everybody comes on board and hears this because this is going to be a big one. I got. Yes, I got. Get I, got <laughs> I got big plans. Big plans for you, Tessa. <laughs> big plans because 
you know, we don't get a chance to talk much, you know, and I wanted to get to know you. I was re I was going through your I spent the last I spent yesterday, just so you know, I went yesterday, I went through your Instagram. I went through your pages, every post. Today, I wrote two, I wrote two pages of notes up until 15 minutes ago. So I got a lot of a lot of stuff that I'd like to ask you, you know, pick your brain and share with everybody. So let me let me just grab this for now because i want to i want to give you my take on on who you are before you share who you are with with everybody okay what I, what i learned from you in your instagram okay and, and i think it's and i think it's good feedback for 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 you right all right let's hear you <laughs> so first of all your name is tessa marie shillingford yeah and i wanted to ask you where were you born dominica Dominica. I wasn't sure. I, not, not, not the Republic. I, Dominica, the island of Dominica, which it's, I always it's wanted. It's yes. I always wanted to go there. I, I was in um, St. Lucia last year. I oh, love well, yeah, yeah. the Caribbean, but we very close, yeah. I mistakenly told somebody that you were probably from Jamaica. You see, that's the mistake I made because I wasn't well, sure. If you, were, if you were in person, I would have slugged you. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, you know what? You know, that's the misconception. Somebody, because... somebody asked me that when I was 21. It was a black man. And he said, I see. He said to me, are you from Jamaica? I, say, I said, <laughs> no, I am, I'm from Dominica. It's really close. In, it's in Russia, close to Moscow. And he said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh. That's... I was like, I left him like that. <laughs> that. That is a great answer. That's a great way to answer somebody. That's Why amazing. Not? That's amazing. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, so, guys. So what I got from your page was that you are a risk taker. You love to challenge yourself. Um, you have a love for plants and nature, Ooh. and you love gardening. Yeah. You're kind-hearted. That's an interesting one. How you're, do you Huh? Okay, go ahead. I'm kind-hearted. Kind-hearted. You're focused, you're passionate, you love hot surroundings. Uh, sorry, you, you, like, you, lo like, you love hot summer days. Yes, I do. You love your morning coffee. <laughs> you meditate. Mm -hmm. You love journaling. Oh, yes. You're a grandmother. Mm -hmm. You're retired. Mm-hmm. You're previously in banking, financial services, correct? Yeah, it's much heckier than that, but that's okay. Yeah, yes, yes. I didn't go into detail. Um, <laughs> you were on a helicopter ride. Yeah, I'm learning to fly one. <laughs> Amazing. You were on the Skywalk, the CN Tower. Yes. You love to travel. Uh huh. You're fearless, and you have a strong faith in God. I have a strong faith. So those are some of the things that I took off of, of getting to know you through your Instagram without, you know, we've spoke uh, indirectly and I've come on your lives, but I really wanted to know who you are. Like I haven't really li listened to all your lives. Like I've been on them, but getting to know you for who you are and what, what you, what you stand for was important for me. Good. I'm glad you liked it. Was I was I was I somewhat right? You're really right. Okay, <laughs> that okay, was just... pretty good. You're really close. My friend Corinne would tell you that's true. Um, you're really close. Yeah, I see. That's true. I see. Um, I have lists. If you want to ask me something in between, go right ahead. Because no, I, I have so already. many. I have so many questions for you. You know why? I prefer you to ask me because okay. I am always the one asking questions. Oh, beautiful. I am Perfect. the forward one. So Perfect. I, it's nice to be the, on the other side. Okay. Amazing. And it, and it gives our followers something to learn about you and what you stand for. And there's lots, there's lots of uh, great points in these, in these questions and I'm sure messages from you as well. Okay. So one of the questions I have is, who is the greatest influence on your life and why? My parents, um, my dad for one on one side and my mom for something else. My faith and the deep-seated 
Catholic faith came from my mother. Right? I see. You're Roman yeah. Catholic? I'm Roman Catholic, yes. I see. I, and she's it's deep seated and that came from her. And and my dad really he, he had to go. He had to follow her. I that see. was that how it was. So I that see. part of me, that faith, the indomitable attitude, the strength, it came from both of them. I see. Um my parents were self employed. My dad was an architect, construction person. And my mom was just, so if you come from that environment, like you have to keep doing what you have to do. You don't give up. Right. But you, nobody gave up. So you had no choice. Yeah. Our parents had a strong will. I mean, a yeah. lot of, they, they, they had a, they had an amazing, amazing work ethic. And they, that's yeah. what they, that's what they, they, that was their legacy. I mean, they weren't um, educated. They, they weren't, they were knowledgeable to a certain degree, not as educated as this generation's, but their work ethic, ethic superseded their intelligence. They, 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 they were educated, but they had something that, we, that is not very common anywhere. And right. you know, they had right. a, a lot of common sense. Yeah. And common sense is not common anymore. Why would you say that? Why, like, why, what, 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 what's your thinking about that? Why, why would that be, you th do you think, your perspective? Well, Every, every interaction had a lesson when yeah. I grew up in my family home. So everything that happened, you were taught to see both sides of it. Right. And, and it came from practicing common sense. Now, I talk to my children, and if it's not in a textbook, like I have one daughter, she's a doctor, and, and my son said to me once, Mom, don't ask any question. If it's not in a textbook, she won't get it. Um, whereas right. my my parents would take that what is happening right now and teach you a lesson from it. So that's where common sense comes into. They, they, they grasp that moment to teach you that lesson and they would force you to see it from both sides. I see, wow. So, and that, that could be our, our, my second live or third live with you because I'm really interested to know because you really, you really have a strong foundation, really strong foundation, I mean, I, I've I've met I have many mentors and coaches over the years, and I've met a lot of people. And I don't think I've heard. Well, there are some obviously, but to have both parents that influential on somebody's life, it's usually one one more so than the other. But the stories that you were telling about your father and, and then your mom on one of your lives, I was really inspired, and I was I, I was intrigued, and I wanted to know. That like, is just the tip of the iceberg. Remember, they lived to be in the 90s. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Wow. Wow. So it was the tip, of, not the tip of the iceberg. So it was a lot. Wow. But it was a household that had a lot of faith, a lot of fun. Amazing. A lot of hard work. Um, everything was there. You went to the best school money could buy. That's what we referred to it. That's amazing. But you always had to, you had to work. You didn't sit around and just sit, said, well, they'll pay for that. They, they said it was their money and you have to go make yours. Yeah. They supported you, but they, they pushed you out of the roost to get to work, get busy. Yes. yes they had to. That's and amazing. That's common sense is they had, they have sufficient sense to know that I cannot make these children believe that their lives is supposed to be that perfect life of having everything without earning it or understanding what we had to do to get it. Right, right. So that's common sense. Yeah, that's parents, any parents listening to this, they should learn, they should listen and learn something from this because there's always a lesson in everything. Com is. Common sense is very, I mean, it's, it's very not important. Common. It's not a common active thing anymore. It yeah. really was, but it's not. But do you feel that maybe we will be going back that way since COVID in 2019? Maybe we'll go back to our, we'll, we'll gain some senses from this and go back to maybe adapting some of that wisdom and those principles from that, that era? Um, like, we will, but who is going to be the teacher? Because it wasn't taught before. It, right. it wasn't taught in the last maybe two generations. You know, 
our generation, the one, the one, my generation, the one behind me, and maybe that other generation. In, but there's a generation that is coming up now that's young, that they, they, they are not taught to be competitive. They're not, they, you know, nobody, everybody gets a prize. You play hockey, everybody gets a trophy. Nobody <laughs> loses. You know, so, so that's, that, a, that's a great point. Wow. Really you know, great point. Yeah. Um, no, um, I, I look at young children coming up. I say, oh, how, who won the game? Oh, it doesn't matter who won. At the end, everybody gets a prize. Wow. That's, you know, that, that's powerful. That's, but that's, a, that that's, a, li that's like a live that. in itself. That's another live in itself. Yeah. So how are they going to teach these children that what they're experiencing now is not normal? Wow. So you have to be with it. So we will, like I miss my friends. I miss my, I, I can't travel to New York. I can't travel period. Like my son said to me, Stoville, um, COVID stole my passport. So I miss that. I, I can visit my friend in the summer. I sometimes sneak, sneak over and we sit and have a glass of wine and we just chat. Or we sat outside, we go for a walk. But now we can, what we're going to do, now that this is over, going to be over, we have to get back together. And will we hug how we used to hug? Or will the people who didn't hug still don't hug? Will they use COVID as an excuse not to hug them, their children themselves? What? Wow. So, so you will learn lessons from COVID, but you, like everything else, you need to learn. You have to seek the lessons. You have to say what I didn't like about COVID and what I missed and what I want. Great perspective. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That's very interesting, very great perspective to how a lot of, I think you summed up how a lot of people, are, some people are thinking about the future, what, what, what it holds, how will parents be, how will teachers be, you know, how we will, how we will go on, you know, and will it go back to how it was, or will it be a different paradigm, a whole, a whole different paradigm, right? I, I think maybe we will, you ever read the Celestine Prophecies? Uh, no, but I, 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 I read enough about, I, I saw you post that book and I wanted to get it. It's on my list of books to read, but I, you know, I'm a Bible guy. I'm, I'm Catholic. Well, it, it's Christian. still in there, but it, it, it's, it's still in there because in the Bible, it's, it, if you use the New, if you only read the New Testament, then you're not getting this, all of it. So as a Catholic, we go from the Old Testament and we work our way through. Right. It's still the mysticism of it is that we will get an insight. We, are, we, we must come out of this COVID with an insight. Oh, I see. And we will we'll appreciate our neighbor more. We will smile more. We will, you know, because of that. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that amazing? Yeah, if we will. My, I have a friend, my friend, and, and when we went walking, and we'd be walking in Gilgood, and people would be coming at us, and they wouldn't say hello. And there was no mask in those days. So we would go, hello, and we'd shove them into saying hello. They would trip almost fall because we, we said hello to them. Yeah. So that will be better. That's, um, what I, that's what I love about going on vacation. I mean, even that's why I go to the Caribbean. They're just so friendly. Everybody's so friendly and hi, you know, mm -hmm. good morning. I mean, you walk out of your door here, and if you say good morning to somebody, I mean, the chances are they're going to give you a, 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 an ugly look, which is... Not on my street. We live on a blessed street. Actually, with the street I live on, we're not intrusive. We're not in each other's faces, but we do know and greet and say something to each other. It's really a beautiful neighborhood. That's beautiful. Believe me, it should be because you, that, you're setting an example for your children. So why wouldn't you be kind to other people or, you know, cordial? At least be cordial. Doesn't mean you have to hang out, but at least be cordial and respectful of one another, right? You have to. But then I, I come across people when I mentor that live in the uh, in the suburbs, further east, further west, further north, and they don't even know the people who live next door. They have never said a word to them, and they don't say a word to them. Yeah, yeah. And sadly, and I think so I don't know whether COVID will keep them further apart. Well, the middle where we're at at this point, it's it's you can see it's pulling people apart. But maybe we haven't hit the breaking point yet. Maybe there'll <laughs> be a there'll be a breaking point where it's either going to go all one way or all the other, right? Like you said. Man, we'll see. Yeah. But only time will tell. One hundred percent. Take take each each day as it comes, right? Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Um. So, 
I want to say I, I was reading uh, one of your one of your quotes. Uh, you were saying, "Yes, you can." Right? That was one of your quotes. You had talked about, "Yes, you can." But what I wanted to ask you was, what are uh, three three core values that you have that you would want to share with other people to know about you? What are your three core values? Like nobody is better than you and you are no better than anybody. And that is something you have to remind yourself every morning when you, so you saw, I talk about greeting to self, right? Right. So you greet yourself in the morning, you, you can go, hi, gorgeous. And at that time you're not feeling gorgeous. Or you can say, I am grateful. I am out of bed this morning. You know what right. I mean? So you, 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 you come in with something like that. So that is the first one is how you feel, how you make yourself feel that day. That yep. moment when you get up. So the second thing is that whatever you have to do that day, the most difficult thing you have to do that day, that is the one you do first. Amazing. And if it's something you don't like to do, but you should be doing it, then that is something you should do first. Amazing. Amazing. And, you, and, you, and one of the things, like I was, I was not allowed as, as a child to use the word cannot. So Beautiful. And my Beautiful. father made me look for it in a dictionary. The dictionary at that time did not have the word cannot. It was two separate words. So I couldn't use, we couldn't use it. We couldn't use it. So can, you, you can, you have to believe you can. Because nobody else will believe for you. And so these are my core values. No I agree. better than you and you're no better than anyone. Yeah. Um, do the most difficult thing first. Yeah. And, and know that you can. All you have to do is try. And don't stop trying. Like, you know, pump yourself up to do it. And don't stop trying. Great point. I always say, I don't know who wrote this word, can't. Where they got this word? Who wrote that? that who wrote that word into the dictionary? It cancels, it cancels whatever you're thinking. You can or you're not. So you're canceling whatever you're thinking. Yeah. So, because one cancels the other out. So. What was the, what, what's the Henry Ford quote? I always forget it. Uh, you think you can? You're right, or I forget how it goes. I'd have to have somebody. Yes, I, I know it, it's in that book, Think and Grow Rich, right? Yeah, yeah. If you think you can, you can, and if you think you can, you will. Yeah. So that's where you want That's to the be. power of positive thinking, right? It if is. Think you, if you think you can, you can. You know. This is, this is very important. Uh, I like, uh, you had mentioned, I like this quote, I don't know if it's a quote or saying, you said, wisdom is ethical and always has a desire to do, do good for others. I really loved that What you that that saying. Is that in your book, by the way? I, I think it's in one of the morning blessings, yes. It, wisdom is an ethical thing, but you can only develop wisdom if you, wisdom, wisdom will come. Right. But you have to be aware that you cannot have wisdom and be unethical. I agree. So, so you must hold wisdom dear. So wisdom comes though with a trio. So wisdom is, does not stand by itself. It's wisdom, it's, it's wisdom knowledge with understanding. So right. when you get wisdom, you will seek the knowledge you want because wisdom will force you to find everything out. But right. then you, you, need to, you need to get the understanding of what you just found out. Correct. So if you don't understand what you're seeking, right? It's not going to work. So wisdom is an ethical thing that you, you, you should not use it or, or throw it around. And some people don't even know when they have wisdom because you cannot feel it. It's not tangible, right? Right. Knowledge, you can get, they can get it from a book. Understanding and wisdom and they're pocketing their, their, their either side of, of, of knowledge. So it's no point you get the knowledge, you develop wisdom and you don't understand what you've got. Which one would you say is more important? Are they both the same value? Wisdom, understanding, knowledge, how all three. You just explained how all three are interconnected, interrelated. It's but would you say- knowledge, It's wisdom, knowledge with understanding. I see. So, I see. so they, 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 you can, they, the person can look at you and say, well, you're wise and you have wisdom. Somebody can say that. But right. there's more to wisdom than just that. Because wisdom helps you to sort things out, right? And the knowledge you get, you will understand that thing that happened. 
and what that is, what the wisdom is come from the wise, but there's young people that can have wisdom. Very, very young people can have wisdom. The way they talk and the way they think and the, and the way they, they so wisdom is almost like an energy that can be seen when the person is in your presence. You can feel the pool of wisdom. I see. Because it's so strong, right? And then the person who has wisdom will look for knowledge. They want more. They want to understand more. They want to understand the mysteries. I see. And then that's why they go and end up understanding it. They come back and they talk to you with an eye. The way they look at you, you can, you can almost feel the energy. Would you say that's part of being curious? Curiosity is part curiosity, of it. Curiosity, you, you, you need to get out of the box. You need, to, you, need to take, you need to take a certain amount of risk. You need to know, you know, why? why? Yeah. And curiosity will ask you why, how come? You know, those type of questions. Yes. And you have heard children. Children come into the world loaded with curiosity. Yeah. And, and then we tell them, don't ask me how come. You know, the children, you, say, you will tell them, no, you can't go out today. And they said, don't ask me how come. And that's the parents who say, you can't go out. And you say, how come? Don't ask me how come. I just said, so that is not enough. So we are the one that keeps that away from them. It's like they would know. All your life, you are told no. So when you grow up as an adult, somebody asks you to go rob a bank, you don't have the guts to say no. Because you were told, no, don't say no, don't tell me no, you know, and you're two years old, you said, no, you already have your independence, but they stifle it from you by telling you, don't tell me no. And who does that? The parent. Wow. Wow. Maybe, maybe we could ask why. Why do you, why, why are you saying no? Have you thought when, about, have you thought about writing a, a, a children's book? I, I, I've been writing children's stories since I had my own children. I really? Wrote, so I wrote stories for my children. I recited them to them at night, and I did that with my grandson. Oh, I see. And so I've always written children. And it's really just, you know, things that they, they're experiencing at the time. And it helps you, be, it helps you become a better parent, better, better mother, better parent. It's by observing. I am, although I'm a big talker and I never shut up, but I observe. I, I, I watch how people talk about themselves. I watch how people talk about their children. And you, you can't, the only thing I knew growing up is that you are so important that I need to know what you're doing. I see. You're so important. And my father had this rule, six boys. He said, you know, you have, when you have a son, they cannot be idle. You have to have your finger on their head like you're looking for a pulse. You have to know where they are at all time. You know, <laughs> that was one of the things he said. I so see. that is where that comes from. You, you, I observe, do I listen to sometimes people talk about their grandchildren with friends and the energy they're sending to this person who is three or four years old who's not there. It, it's so low. It's such a low energy. Right. And, and when somebody is talking with a low energy, their structure of their face changes. Have you noticed that? Yes. They get a sneer. They have an attitude that is not nice. And and if you send that energy towards a child, you know, it, it, it's, it's awful. If a child likes going for a walk I, I, and they want to go, come on, let's go. I take them for the walk. And I'll, I'll say, do you want to turn back? No, let's go some more. Do you want to turn back? Let's go some more. When we get to that some more, oh, I'm so tired, Grammy. I said, well, I told you to turn back. Well, can you carry me? No, you wanted to go far. Let's try that. <laughs> so, you know, so you have to let them know they made a choice. And right. they, now they have to stick with that choice. But no, you, you cannot do that with children. You have to know where they are. That's amazing. Wow. I uh, just want to take a moment to say hello to all the followers that have joined us. Uh, Yuko, Yuko joined. She says hello. You can probably see her. Hi, Yuko. Rosie, many people were on, are on here. <laughs> Hi, Dawn. Listening to you. So, Dawn is your, your uh, sister? My, yeah, my sister. I mean, she's, well, in New, she's in New York. Oh, amazing. Welcome, Dawn. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, oh, so my, my friend Suzanne is on here. Susie Cookie, Cook, Cooking and See. She's on here. Ali Hamkin is there. Salam Hubi. To all our to all the Persian followers and viewers, yeah. Um, I got a, just one more page of questions for you, Tessa. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I, I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Hi, Don. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm learning a lot from you because this is a really 
uh, special time to to really under this time in life is a time for learning and wisdom, like you said, and understanding and acquiring acquiring knowledge. So many people, I think, waste their time doing such wasteful things, and I think we should be a little bit more um, respectful of our times and be more practical and and immerse ourselves in things that where we can learn from others and be better become better people so i know this live would will make me a better person and so, so. you you're you are looking at at me from a point of view that i don't get often as if i if i ask my friends what do you think oh it is great i only have one friend she'll tell me some things and then sometimes she no i noticed she hasn't said anything lately i i'm, I'm afraid to ask her because she might tell me something I don't. But that's about the only person. If I call someone, I say, do you know how to do this? Why are you asking me? You're always the one who's telling me what to do. That's the answer I get. So, but so we all here to help. we're all here to help one another. I've learned so much in the last year. And one of the things, one piece of advice I would give to you, um, going through your Instagram today, I haven't gone through it a lot, but I try to tell people, even my, my clients and friends, is is you are so authentic and so real and so wonderful and helpful and so knowledgeable your posts your videos are amazing i see you're doing more videos and speaking which is you're getting more comfortable with that yeah. um it's amazing but the messages from all your posts are to a higher degree of wisdom that most people maybe have not implemented in their life because if they they do take one or two things it will change their life drastically i know because uh, some of the things that you speak about and i have them in some of my notes is are profound to me because i've i've learned them before heard from other speakers and i've put them in into my own life and my life has changed night and day so the one thing i would say to you about your using your instagram a little bit more because probably you were more facebook orientated before but your posts are incredible. Just engage your followers more. Ask them questions. Like I'm asking you. Yeah, ask was, have you seen when you ask them questions? I, like Friday night is ask the question night. I have to pull teeth to get it. It's like, uh, like I have a pair of pliers and I'm pulling out molars. And I'm saying, you know, people don't, they're afraid to ask a question. And you don't can I, do that. Can, can I tell you something? Don't ask your friends and family. No, I don't. I just ask anybody. I put it yeah. out there. Ask the people that, like our circle of people that were following each other yeah. for, their, for their point of view and what they think. Because, I mean, I could show you my messages, uh, DMs with some of the people that have liked my posts and I go out of my way. And I built such amazing relationship with them, with them off, off of face, off of Instagram from, from the DMs. First I'll try that. Yeah, it's, it's really, you know, it, it could be like some people are afraid to post stuff and write stuff uh, on the social media. So go to the DMs and if the, once you uh, engage them on the DMs and you find that they're opening up, opening up, it takes time. Then you can have a call with them. You can have a call and I, I do Zoom, I do, sorry, Instagram lives. I'm on Instagram, not lives, but um, the Instagram chat uh, video. I'm around the world, Iran, uh, Pakistan, to my friend Taib, who's on here, my, uh, my uh, Alex Billing, Phil, and Philip, I'm always on the video. Like we're and we're brainstorming. We're we're you know talking like like I've gotten to know them better than I know people here locally, which is unbelievable. I must try that. I will. You know, I like the challenge, so I look for that. Your so your con. Let me tell you, your con. Your content is amazing, and I'll tell you something. I I knew of your book, but up until I did my homework with you. I said, "Wow, I need. I want to. I want to get that. That so that's on my list to, to, to get the book. I want to. I want to read your book. So, thank you. And I'm really looking forward to that because. And I haven't finished going through your whole Instagram yet, but there's so much more to learn and videos. But, um, I have. Hold on one second. So you mentioned you talk about cl um, clarity and focus are key to you. You talk about this clarity and focus are key to you so what are what are some of the things you do to stay focused um you for you to be focused you have to have clarity right you cannot just focus on air 
You cannot just wake up and focus on, on the TV. That's not going to take you there. So in order to focus, you need clarity. You find clarity by knowing what you want. You find clarity by knowing what you want to do. You find clarity by taking time in, in prayer and meditation or taking time in going for a walk. There is a thing called a walking meditation where all you listen to is your foot hitting the pavement. You have something to sort out. Telling your friends who cannot fix the problem about the problem does not help. It's just not helping. So to get your clarity, you have to clear your mind. And your mind can control you. You can get up. Sometimes my mind is having a, a game. And I just say, okay, fine. You don't want to behave. Let's go for a walk. And I actually literally talk to my mind like that. Like it's a different person, which it is. It's a different entity. It's not the true you. So, and you find clarity by knowing what it is. What are you here for? What do you like to do? And, if you, and then you can focus on what you want to do if your mind is clear. But if your mind is jumbled, it's not there. Another thing I do, I write longhand very, very fast. The pen never leaves the page. The page. Um, three pages every morning. And I just dump whatever comes out of there. You know, it just gets on there. Like a, like, a, like, a, like a brain dump. Yes, it's not legible and it, you, it's not readable. You have to throw it out when the book is done. But so to get clarity, you have to empty yourself. You have to empty your mind. You have to know. You have to go inside there. You, you have to connect with this heart of yours, that person inside there. That's a great and point. And That's a really great be, point. You know, so. Trying to remember because, you know, sometimes I have so many thoughts and then by the time I actually, I say, okay, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to write it down. Or I'm going to make note. And then I forget. Like, so it's important. That, that is very important what you just shared is having that time where you sit down and write out your thoughts, you know, what your, what your thoughts, what your feelings are, and just jotting them down because you, get, you do get a sense of clarity from, yes, all, from is, all that, right? It's not journaling. Journaling is completely different. Right. Is opening your mind so you can receive new information, letting go. Yeah. You see, what we don't realize is that the biggest, the best machine that was ever created in the whole wide world, we are in it. I asked that question at a workshop and nobody told me about the guest techno machine. They told me about the computer, the iPhone, all this thing. But the greatest mach uh, machine ever created is the human body. Yeah. We eat we eat and we have to excrete. If we don't let go, we cannot get more. We cannot take in more food. Right. A vacuum cleaner absorbs at one end and blows air out at the other. If you block that back, air blowing, it won't work. So that is what we have to do. We need to dump. There's two ways of dumping. When you are muddled and you cannot focus and you're looking for clarity, you let it go. Another way of dumping is to teach what you know. Right, right. So, wow. and so when you teach, you learn because you're hearing it again. And while you're letting it go, a new idea will come up. Very and true. You always have to observe somebody that a person who works with their hand thinks entirely differently about a problem than you that work with your mind. That's so a great perspective. You, you, you look at them, they, they will, something has to be fixed. They look at it in a different way. You, and no matter what you do, you won't understand it. Because you're not a customer of using your hand to do that. You, you, you go for the information from your brain. They look at it and they see the problem before you can see the problem. Great point. Wow. That's, I, never, I never looked at it like that. That yeah, clarity, clarity comes from, from dumping. You have to let it go. You cannot yeah. do that stuff. It's like anything. It's energy, right? Releasing mm -hmm. and attracting back that energy, giving out that energy and bringing back the energy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. That, that was amazing. Um, let me see. I like, the, I like one of your sayings was the fear of, I know this is right down your alley, so you say this because this is going to go down to what, what you you know you, your business that you were in your career for many many years. The fear of poverty does not rock your boat; it sinks it. Of course so, it does. Huh? Of course it does. Yeah. So ex explain to everybody what you mean by that. I know. Well, what you well mean. Job. Well, Job said in in the Bible that the thing that I feared the most has happened to me. 
That's what he said, right? Yeah. And he lost all his wealth. And yes. he had to start up again. Luckily for him, he stood up and started up again. So what you fear of poverty, when you're afraid of something, you're, you, that's all you do. You're thinking of it. What you contemplate, that is what you get. Where energy, where attention goes, energy flows. So if you want to be poor, just think of being poor. And it, it will come to you. And truly, when somebody tells me, but tell somebody I have no money, I always ask them to open your wallet. And if there's $2 or $5 or one penny, I said, you have money. So instead of when somebody um, come to you and say, Donato, can I get a loan? Or can I borrow $10? You just say, I, the money I have is allocated for something else. So you don't say, I don't have money, because you do have money. Right. So that is what I mean. Poverty, it, it, the fear of poverty will sink your boat. Yeah. And a, lot, and a lot of people, I understand this, because I was in finance, and I, had a, I probably had a poverty mindset before I got into the financial industry. I didn't, you know, I never saw, until you get into banking or finances, you really do not understand wealth until you get into that kind of world. It's a whole different life. It is, it is. But I grew up with parents that understood it and they taught it to you. I so I, I, understood, I understood that money doesn't grow on trees. And, and my father would give us an example. I remember one day, I must have been about 12, 13, and in the, the house in this city, they, they have a bakery of corn, and then they had chickens and in a coop and stuff, you know, all these things, rabbits and ducks or whatever. Anyway, whatever. And there was sometimes they get these chickens get a disease and they just drop, right? The fowl. And one of the men that worked for him came to him and they called him Bush, you know, shot for bourgeois. And they said to him, he said to him, can I get these chickens before they drop? So they do, I can see they will be dying. So can I take them? And my dad said to him, no, because we, you know, they have a disease. He said, well, if I get them before they're actually dead, I will, you know, and he got so, then he said, do whatever you want. But when the man left, he turned to me, he said, you see that? He said, this is what, this is the sin of poverty. And he said, if that man had money to buy proper food for his children, he wouldn't be pick, picking up half dead chicken to go cook for them. He said, that's why I tell you poverty is a sin. Wow. So that's so that I knew growing up. I want to. I'll share with you a little story with with me and my daughter once. I was in Shoppers Drug Mart looking to buy a card for somebody I forget, and my daughter was looking at the stuffed animals, and my daughter has thousands of them. I buy. I've been buying her stuffed animals since she was born, and I. She goes, Daddy, I want this. It was Easter time, so I was looking for an Easter card. She says, Daddy, I want this Easter bunny. I said, Honey, no. You have enough already. You don't need another one. And then I, and then she kept bugging me. And I said, listen, money doesn't grow. Money doesn't grow on trees. And I turned back. I was looking at the car and she, she pulled me. She said, daddy, money does grow on trees. I looked and a lady was behind me, looked at me funny, was laughing. I looked like, what are you talking about? She goes, daddy, money comes from trees. It's made from trees. I said, oh my God. I said, you know what? Just take the, let's go get the, Get the stuffed animal. Let's go. She made me laugh. I laughed so hard. I just, I was stopped. I was just stopped in my tracks. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> well, you you couldn't. You it would take too long to explain the truth behind that. So let yeah, just, let it, yeah. So she yeah. got what she wanted, and that's what matters in the end. You see. Hey, that's what happens. Daddy's little girl, right? You just you give them everything they want. That's what happens. At least that's what happened to me. <laughs> she was persistent and paid. Yeah, yeah, and that's. Sometimes that's a, that's a great gift with kids. They yeah. are per, they are persistent, right? When they want something, they yeah. won't stop till they get it. And no, they want. and like us adults, we try to we try to kill that for them. We try we usually, to. They usually succeed. We usually succeed because these are the people you see that won't ask. And when they they, they face a wall, they stop. And I, I one of these things I I love that movie, The Shawshank Redemption. Oh, amazing, amazing. I, I quote it a lot and I said, oh, he started with a spoon and all he kept doing was digging at that wall until he got the hole. Made yeah. 
he was persistent. He had he was focused. He had he was clear on what he wanted to do. He had clarity. Yeah, and that is what. It, so that's what it is. If you want something, you have to work on it. it. It's not going to working for you. Would you say this is is this one of your favorite movies? Absolutely. That and another one could have called the Prisoner of Zender. And I never heard of that Prisoner of Zender. Very that's an old movie. It um, Stuart Granger was the I, actor. So it's an old movie. I and see. That, and that Shawshank Redemption. I like I, the Green Mile. I love movies that teaches a lesson. I don't watch something that I cannot learn from. If there is no learning, then or or something that fills me up. Yeah. I don't. I don't watch it. So I'm the same way to a certain degree. I like <laughs> I like action movies. I love sports, but I I love I, love I, I like I love documentaries and biographies because I like learning from their experiences. Of course, because that's one of the things. That's why I read so much. My father said, "Everywhere the author goes, you go." So you're on a trip everywhere that author has gone. You're just your mind is in that book, and you're going with the author. So you visit many countries before you've ever gotten there. Yeah, that's amazing. That's that's amazing. And actually, that leads to one of my questions. You said country author, so that just bing, the light went off. I noticed on your page you love to travel. Well, you're a people person. You love to travel. Tell me what what place that you've you've been is your was your favorite memory or favorite place that you travel to? I'm curious, and why? <laughs> so much, so much traveling. <laughs> Um, One of your favorite? I like I, I I love old the old world. So my favorite and I'll never forget is my trip to Stonehenge. Stonehenge, wow! Yeah. So, wow. So, so that was that was inspiring or inspiring. Like you know, if, if you are very calm and if you're really if you like, I can be in a group and I can wander off. It's it's very simple for me. Mm -hmm. Once and once I do that, I get into a zone, and I, I just it was it fascinated me. So you you know, and and that you was you, you, was, you wander off why because you want to explore. That's the explore. I, know. I I think I get so if I'm going somewhere, I I get into the the place before I leave Canada or leave Dominica or leave England when you're in England to go. I see, and. You're in the zone. So when you get there, there can be all this noise and all these things, but I can sense something deeper. And Stonehenge, um, when, I, when I went to, to Australia and we passed the international time timeline, that, was, that in itself is shaking on your body. You, your body really feels it. So that was important. And that was a, an experience I wanted to see if I could have. And you do get it when you cross the international time zone. So you were saying, so you get that feeling in, in Stonehenge or in Australia? In, uh, well, when you, Australia is so far south that the, there's a, a line, right? In the atmosphere, you, you can feel it. So yeah. You, so that, that experience is good. Um, Stonehenge, wow. um, Machu Picchu, Peru was amazing. Um, I, fig I figured Machu Picchu. Pichu was one of your favorite. Machi Pichu was one of my favorites. Um, I just wanted to get right up to the top. It took four days, and I wanted to make sure that I did that. It took four days to get to the well, top they, there? They take everybody to one point, and then you can go right up to the end, and that's a four-day trip. So you sleep and you get up and you go again. Wow. Is it that high? It, it is. It's extremely The air is thin. Yeah, that's what I heard. Very, very thin. And people get, you get... They're sick from this, you know, they throw up, they get sick, they faint, they pass out, they get awful headaches. Wow. I, 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 didn't real, I didn't realize that because that's, one, that's, one that's on my bucket list, that place. Yeah, they, they, the usual trip is to a certain point, but you can go beyond that. And, and so I, we did that. Well, some people attempted, six of us attempted. I was the only one that finished it because I wanted to finish it. But I, 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 can't, I wasn't talking and I concentrated on where I was. I concentrated on what I wanted to do. I, I did take deep breaths. I, I, you know, I did the stuff that they said. You, you, were, you were focused on your mission. I, I am. I am usually focused on things. Like there's a saying in the family that if I have to tell you to, I, I must have planned it six months ago. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. So before you go away to a place, 
do you do research on that place? Do you study it before you go? So you're, you're, you're are you like that pl that planner type that plans everything out? Well, no, I plan a trip with a, a, a travel agent. I tell them what I want to do. I see. And where I want to go. And then I, I get some information on it enough. I don't want to know everything. I want to have experiences that are not, I don't want to fill myself with what somebody else has written because in that way I am having their experience. I see. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, what else? So what else did I have here? Just a few questions. Uh, what does success for what is success in the new world after COVID-19 look like for you? You like these questions, eh? They make you think. You, you, when you ask me a question, I actually repeat it to myself. So I repeat your question. Normally, I would say it to you. Yeah. Um, so you're you, asking me. You can what, say it back to me. I can. can. I normally do. What you're saying to me, what success will mean to me after COVID-19? Yeah. Yeah. Um, after COVID-19, success will, will be like the world is closed. So it's like I open my door in the morning and I see all my friends and my neighbor and my family. That is success for me after, that will be success. It's like I open the door and there is everything that we can do. We might not be able to do all of it, but success will be to see people in flesh. Amazing. And, and that is the success for me after COVID-19. That's wonderful. That, that, would be a, that would be a dream. Uh, for all of us to happen, right? It, it, it's to open, open the world and let, I open the door and step out after a big rainstorm, after a storm, and the hurricane has come to hit. So now you open the windows to see what damage has been done. So that is how it will be for me. That is right, successful. right. And, and look forward to whatever life will bring us at that point, right? Well, you just have to, you just have to take it. We, we don't have a choice. We have to step into it because, I mean, the younger generation, if they're smart, there are going to be a lot of new um, opportunities for entrepreneurship. 100%. They're already, they're, they're already here. They're already yeah, here. They're here. But then there'll be so much more. Like the people, people have, can have unique experiences. There'll be so much to do and new things to, to develop and to get into. So one, one thing that I really love, personally speaking, is I love the fact that uh, this time frame is bringing people to collaborate that maybe before would have never collaborated because we were just too busy. We're, everyone was so busy running back and forth that they didn't even have time to have a conversation. They didn't even have, they really, you, really even you didn't have time to email or text somebody. Everyone was so busy and running around. You didn't even have time for that conversation with somebody. Oh, email me. Oh, send me a D send me a text, email me. No one uh, yeah, a lot of my early posts I talked about that and I said, Well, no, you know, we, we can't. <laughs> so what are you yeah. going to do? Know that we can't. When you have the opportunity to visit your neighbor or to visit your sister, your brother, your person, your friend, you didn't. When the phone you didn't pick up the phone, you couldn't be bothered. Well, no, you can't. So what do yeah. you do? Exactly. So, so, so you can. So we have to realize that and not make the same mistake again and again and again. Yeah, one hundred percent. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Yes. Welcome. Hello, Nikki. Nikki. Uh, who there. else is on here? Uh, okay. Albert. Oops. Albert. A few other people. Thank you for joining us, everybody. This is uh, Teresa, T uh, T Tessa Marie Schilling Ford here from Toronto. She's an author and writer. Would, I, would, I, would that be probably consider you a writer? I guess. Because okay. that's what I do. Writer. I write every day. And, Great and, conversation, my sister said. I'm glad you love it. And your book is called what? If you want to tell everybody about your amazing book. I have the Controlling the Debt Monster and mm. I have the Morning Blessings. Amazing. Controlling the Debt Monster and morning, the Morning Blessing, right? Yeah, yeah. The Morning Excellent. Blessings is like a tabletop book. Where you Amazing. I didn't know about the other one, the Debt Monster. I can't, read, I can't wait to read that one as well. So That is fascinating. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, one question I have here. Who is your biggest cheerleader? <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> He's dead? Yes. It was your dad? 
my husband. Oh, your husband. Oh, I'm sorry. My condolences. I didn't realize That's that. Fine. My husband, and I know my husband is um, my, my, my brothers and sister. Um, they're big supporters. Uh, my sister Dawn is a great supporter. My, I, have, I have a friend, uh, my friend Corinne, like, you know, she's, she's always there. She's that's, like, that's she's wonderful. always there. That's, if, I, if, I, if I twist, I'm sure I'm going to fall on her. <laughs> <laughs> like we are, we this, this week I, I told her, you know what, this is funny. This is the first Christmas we didn't go into some mall and get in trouble. So, so that type of person, my sister Dawn, I have I have six brothers. One brother is dead. I have a sister who died in France. She was she died quite young, and the other brothers. I so I have a brother in England, Eric and Milton, and some of you. So we I'm close with three or four of them. We're really close. Like the others are way different places, and it's a different relationship. I see. But wow. we have like these four of us have like mind. We 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 did we do a lot of the similar things. You know, we're reading like. Our family are big readers. We will send a book all over the world, one book. Really? Yeah, we, 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 we have done you'll that. You'll yeah. share it. Yeah, we have done that. There was a series of books that was wow. written by Peter Danielson called The Children of the Lion. There were 19 books in the series. And we all, from my dad, my mom, we all read the books. I think Children of the Lion. Yeah, it's by Peter Danielson. You, you can get it on um, Amazon, Amazon. But you... um. It's a dollar because it's old, but yeah. you, have to, you pay twelve dollars to post it. <laughs> Sounds like a very interesting read. Children, it, it, it's a it's a book based on the Bible, but it's oh, it is fiction. There's another book I got to read. It, it's a lot. Nineteen books in the series. Really? It's worth it. Yes. Is it all based on the Bible? Yes, it starts, and it, it's all based of the children of the lion, right? The, 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 wow! The mark, the mark of the lion. Wow. Goes on. It goes all through the all when they were in Egypt. Everything. It just it's amazing. Wow! I can't wait. Another great. Another. You should look it up. The author is dead. I will. Another another great read. Yeah, it is. This is my time to read because before I didn't have a time. I was going from conference to conf. I didn't have time to even just barely sleep. So. <laughs> no, no, you can read. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a great point. Um, I'm just looking at these questions. That's okay. Get them going. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, yeah. Uh, well, I just want to make sure I get them all in. Yeah, you can. I, I, I'm not ready. But we'll just have a live two, live three. We do a series. We do a series, Mina. Um, <laughs> I know today's mantra was, I'm taking my life one step at a time. If you want to explain, what do you mean by you're taking one step at a time? Well, your life, you cannot rush through life, right? If you, you, did you read the, the other one that I did? Life is like the Christmas tree. It stops at every station. Yeah. You watch people get up, you watch people get on. Everybody has a story. People fall in love, people die on the train, people going home, some are sad, some are happy, some are scared. So that is life. Life is like the Christmas tree. So with life, you have to take it one step at a time. Right. Life, life is like your car. When you, when you nowadays, when you turn your, 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 when you press the ignition, you don't turn anything anymore. Um, the lights come on, and you can only see as far as one hundred yards. But right. to get to get to where you have to go, you must take the car to the next to that hundred yards, so you can see the next hundred yards, right? Right. So life is like that. Life is every step. It's each step. On each step, one step at a time. One step at a time. There's no such thing as galloping, galloping through life. You gallop through life, you endanger yourself, you endanger others, and you don't get to see anything. You don't yeah. experience life. Yeah. I always have, I have a saying, the journey begins with the first step. It does. So, so that's one step is the step you have to take. Like, if you're a person that loves time for yourself, then you should maybe get up earlier if you have to take care of a family. So you have that time to have that piece of, that cup of coffee with nobody there. Right. You know, so it's, it's one step. Just, it's not, a, it's not a series of steps. Correct. Wow. That's a great point. Great point. Thank you. Um, what, are five, what are your five financial tips you recommend for 2021? Oh, that it, financial tips never change. Right. Because your life, you have to live your life. 2021, you still have bills to pay. 
2020, you still had bills to pay. COVID took everything, but it left you with all your responsibilities and all the arrangements you made that you have to be honoring. So it took away your job, but it did not take away your debt. Right. It took away your job, but it, it destroyed everything. You still have to eat. The price of food went up, so you still have to eat. So your tips for, for life is number one, which is a question. I, the first thing I want to know is how much, if everybody should know exactly how much money they owe, O-W-E. I don't mean that you say, I think I owe about- what, what, your, what, what your debt is exactly. Yes, how much your debt. And I mean to the dollar, to the penny. To if the penny, to the penny. dollars and 25 cents, you should know that. Right. And then how much do you own? You need to know those numbers. It's, yeah. it's something that's important to do. Then, so you know how much you owe, you know how much you own, you, you have to know how much you earn exactly. So don't tell me my take home, take home pay is around $200, $2,000 a pay. Around what? So you need to know how much it is exactly. Exactly. So that is the first three things. How much do you own? How much you owe? And how much you, you get the net pay into your account. So how, you know what I mean? What you yeah. use. Then the next thing is, what is your, your spending plan? What, what plan do you have? And so that is number four. So now you have a plan. What is the most important thing on that plan that you want to accomplish in 2021? Or any year for that matter. So hold, hold, knowing how much debt you have, knowing how much you earn, knowing how much you get paid because what you earn, you, earn, you earn is not what you get paid. Correct. What is on your spending plan? What it is you want to accomplish? Which one? And I talked about the SMART goals. So which one is the most important one that you want to make sure you accomplish in 2021? So you cannot, if you go to, to a war and you don't know where it, what's happening there, you show up without a gun, you don't have a helmet, you don't have boots, you cannot succeed. You know, you're failing before you get off the plane. Right. So that's what it is. People have to know how much money they borrow, how much, what is the credit card limit? What you did, people don't know that. And if you don't know, you just keep spending. That's a great point that you make because a lot, it, like from all the years of like me taking courses and learning about financial and all this stuff, would you, would you agree or would you suggest that people are just so afraid? First, first of all, they have limiting beliefs around money, but they're afraid to be real about their money situation. So how can you heal? It's like going to a doctor. You go to the doctors and you ask the doctor, hey, I need your help, but you don't want to reveal everything, what the problem is. How can the doctor help you? Would you well, agree? That, well, that's what I usually tell people. I said, I am a GPS. You have to give me the information for me to take you there. So if you're not giving me all the information I need, I cannot take you to where you want to go. Right. I, so that is what people must understand. And another thing I, I, people should know is that your, your bank manager, your friend at the bank, the person on the phone, they're not your friend. They have a job to do, and that job means getting you to do what they want you to do. So if, they ask, if you already have one credit card and they're giving you two and three, that is what they're supposed to do today. It's not yeah. you helping. Right. So these are the type of things they take. So, but the five ones is knowing all about your money. And if you ask 10 people in a room if they want to be rich, most people would not answer you. They would look at you and, just, and some of those that would actually speak will say no. They would say no. They would say, I need to be, I just want to be comfortable. So I ask, what is that number? And nobody, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, that's why I'm asking you, what is comfortable? So what is your perspective around that? Why is it they, they answer like that? And why, are, why is it that most of them don't want to answer or the ones that answer? Why is it such a small percentage or maybe if no percentage at all that want to be rich? Because, because religion has told them that it's easier for a camel to get through an eye of a needle. Than rich <laughs> and all religion make them believe that. There's religions now that are not Catholic, born again Christians that tell them, if you don't tithe, you won't have money. 
but she couldn't pay her rent. But she's giving you $600 a month. Yeah. And you're taking it from her. And then the next thing, she's working and there's a collection because she's running through all because you, you're asking her to tie. Right. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but it, it has to be. I had a young girl who was who I was doing financial planning with, and she made a lot of money, 100000 And she wanted to buy her own home, and she was driving a r ratty car. And I, I said, you have to do better than this, you, you know, for what you want to do. So when I, I spoke to her, I said, I noticed she was always at the church. So I said, you are giving them $980 every month. Because it's ten percent of a hundred thousand, so it's ten thousand dollars a year. So ten percent of the gross, not the net. Right. And she wants. So I said, you cannot do that. Right. So when I told her that, I then I I because you have to know people. So when I had learned sufficient from her to figure out, she was spending time at the church, maybe two or three nights a week, doing choir, doing youth group, and all of these things. So I said to her, how many hours do you give to the church every week? She said about 20, 23 hours a week after work and, and stuff. So I said, well, you make $60 an hour. So 60 times 20 hours, you're already giving them all the money you should give them because you're giving them your time. So I told her, when you go to church, talk to the pastor and ask him if you can use some of your volunteer time at the rate of money you make towards it. And you know what he said? I was wondering when you would ask because I was thinking of that myself. Wow. wow. So all she had to give them was $90 every month. She, of course, got her home. She, of course, got her new car. And she's fine. She's married now, have a baby, and have her own home. Amazing. But this is what they, they make them do. They tell them, if you don't tithe to the church, you won't get. And you won't want your pastor to fly commercial, do you? My, I, need a, I need an airplane. That's horrible. So the congregation has to come up with the money for the airplane. That's horrible. horrible. So, so that is what causes that. They tell them they're afraid to be rich because they have told them that rich people are bad. Wow. That's so bad. But it's true, though. You, you, you hear it all the time. I've heard it so many times. I just know one thing is that, you know, what I know today, I wish I knew, like, when I was... 10 years old because <laughs> everybody has a fear of money and nobody that, that's scarcity that's lack of ha we're fear, afraid of la lack of money it's because our limiting beliefs are so bad around money that's why i find like somebody like you that has been in the financial world for a long time and is trying to educate people on have being better financially more responsible financially and and being, you become uh, more abundant with your finances once you understand the whole principles and values of money, right? Well, it's, it's like I have to explain it. And you, you, you asked me to, to bring it down a bit so people get it really well. People come to apply for a loan at the bank. They come, they dress nicely, they apply for the loan, and they go home and wait. They go to God to get a gift, and they go back every day asking for the same thing. It's like God is death. Mm -hmm. and, and when he had said to you, ask and you shall receive. So if you believe, you should just ask one and wait. But they don't wait. And they don't even sit and wait. And you're supposed, when you go to ask for a favor, you don't just come and ask for the favor and turn your back and wait and go away. You sit and you wait to hear what that person is going to say. The only place they don't, they don't do it is when they ask God. But, you, but that's how religion has taught them. So they repeatedly ask, and that time, that prayer now becomes begging. I see. Because you you keep asking constantly, you're not begging, and that is not what those words are. They carry these Bibles with them, and that's what the Bible tells you. Ask and you shall receive. It didn't say you should ask 500 times to receive. Right, right. So, so, and it, so and it, also, it also teaches us patience. Sometimes we don't get what we want when we want it. But teach we are it because, not clear. Huh? We, 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 most often we are not clear. Correct. Correct. We have, we have, you, you're, you're asking for you're asking for a Rolls Royce and really all you have is room for a Volkswagen. Yeah. And that is the room you have inside of you. And 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 a lot of times we we're not we're not patient. You know, there's timing around everything sometimes and if everything was so that easy, everybody would get what they want and what would life be? It, it would be boring. 
There'd be it, no excitement. It would be. It would be. You can get what you want, but you have to know. You have to do do the things to get it. Yes. It, it's not going to fall from the sky. And like I have had people who have gotten what they want, and then they they blame God for giving it to them. Oh wow! So so somebody one person said to me, "Why did God give me all this property in Jamaica?" And I and he knew I wouldn't go to Jamaica to live. And I said, "What?" I said, "Did God come down wherever He is to sign that check and buy the land and hire the lawyer and all that?" I said, "No." I said, "You that is a choice you made." I so they asked, well, "What should I have done?" I said, "Well, did you find out whether that was for your highest good? Did you ask that question for yourself?" I said, "The God you're praying to is inside of you. When you were doing that." prayer and asking God to bless you. Did you say, Father, is this, is this for my highest good or mother, whoever your God is? Is that the best for me? Wow. And then wait to hear. You know, don't jump. Wait to yeah. hear. Yeah. So okay. I said, you keep walking ahead of the God you pray for. So how can the God guide you when you're leading the way? Right. So, That's so great. both sides of the coin, right? 100%. That's a great, great point. Great, great perspective, great point for people to uh, to listen to and hear. But that is from observing and hearing people speak. I listen, I really, when I hear you, I really hear you. Yeah. Well, it takes, you know, we have two years to listen. A lot of people do not listen. They don't listen enough. I, I'm training people all the time to stop talking and listen. Just listen. You learn so much more, but people think they're learning more by talking. They just... I even see it all the time, people in business, they just talk too much. Like they over talk. And it's to the point where it, it, it makes you feel sick to your stomach. And I'm, I'm thinking, are you hearing yourself? Because you obviously can't hear yourself because you would have stopped long ago. <laughs> when right? you say empty vessels make the most noise or empty barrels make the most yeah. noise. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I know we're, we're we're over our time, we're over an hour, which it's been amazing. But I have one more, one last question I do want to That's ask. You. Fine. I saved the best for last, okay? Uh -huh. I saved the best for last for you. Uh -huh. uh, and I want to thank everybody again for following us and, and yes, being on this live everybody. tonight, listening to uh, my dear guest and wonderful friend Tessa here out of Toronto. But my last question to you is what? So uh, you talk about legacy is putting uh, a stamp on the future and making a contribution to the future generations. It's not always uh, material possessions. So my question to you is, what will be your legacy? <laughs> your question to me is, what will be my legacy? Yes. When you I leave this world... My, leg my legacy is that she stepped into life when she rocked it. She stepped into life and she, and rocked, she rocked it. it. That is really, that's not what it is. But that, basically, if you, if you get to know me, I love life. I love the very essence of life itself. I love the breath of life. I love, I love the, the things that, that, that you can do. I see possibilities when in everything. It's like it takes my breath away every day. So my legacy is take your time. Take, your, take a jump into life and get there. Like, you know, the legacy is, is she, my, my mother was here and she enjoyed her life. She, she loved nice things. She ate nice things. She behaved. She was generous. She was kind. She did all kinds of things. And Amazing. that, she was talking on her life, right? Amazing. And she, she did all kinds of things. And she, when she left, when I bow out of the world and I leave, I, I will not have regrets. I know that already. I will have absolutely no regrets. Because if I need to tell you to go to hell, I will tell that to you. I will wait for the right opportunity. So that's why I like those movies. Right. I, I love to live to fight another day. I do, it's not like they say, my mom used to say, it's not the same day your mother died that you must cry. You can cry 10 years later. Or if you want to say revenge is a dish best of cold. So I might not take it up right now. I will mull it, and six months later, I will, I will act on it. Then the person, who's, the person will not understand that because they will not do that. But I, I, don't, tell, I don't like telling lies. I don't like that. 
So my legacy is that for my children, let me know what's going on because I have no choice. I must be on your side. And I don't want to surprise. So my legacy is knowing that she came and she did it her way. She loved it. And you can leave money, you can live well, that's good too. But let them sit at home or in their minds and have a laugh about you. You know how to do something, you teach somebody how to do it. You 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 don't you're never afraid to give. Right. You go you see something and it reminds you of someone and you, you get it for them because so that type of thing is just enjoying life. That is my legacy is knowing that she enjoyed everything she did. There is a, a, a something that I made up and this man died and went to heaven. I made it up. I don't know where these thoughts come from, but they come from somewhere. And when he got there, he was there was a room, a huge room, huge room. And in that room were all these different shaped boxes with a white bridal paper, that shiny white paper with that bright royal blue ribbon tied on them. And they were all scattered in this room, packed, and they were there. So he looked at the room and he won, he was wandering in. And St. Peter said to him, you can't go in there. Don't go in. But anyway, he found a way. When St. Peter was looking, he went in. When he, he went in, then he's coming back out and he's all dejected. His shoulder is slumping and he's coming. He said to St. Peter, why is my name on all those boxes? St. Peter said to him, these are all the opportunities you had and you didn't take them. Wow. So, so yeah. that's what so wow. I want to make sure <laughs> I don't miss any opportunity. When I love, I love with everything I have. When I give, I give with everything I have. When I do, I do it generously. It's just life. You, you have to enjoy it. It's, that's, well, that's, that's amazing. So my legacy is that's your legacy. That. Huh? That's your legacy. Yes. Knowing that you, you, it, it's there. Why not try it? Right. It's there. So, if, so I left this one out, but so it ties in. So if your time was up, if your time was up, what is the one thing that you would tell the world? So I want to, I want to leave. We're going to close off after this. We're going to, we're going to close off time, this live. We're going to close. Time, if my time was up and I had a choice to, to, to what would I, what is the one thing I would tell the world? Tell the world. Live that's, today. That's like your last today. words. Tell the world. Live Live today like it's the last day of your life. Do everything you want to do every day. Everything. When I went to Vegas in January, I was with my daughter and her son and her husband. And every time we were walking, somebody was coming for him to, to a girl, women, to take pictures, right? So then I jokingly said to my son, you know, if it's men, I'm going to take pictures with them. So lo and behold, two naked men or half naked guys showed up. He said, when they go, I, went, I, took, I took the picture with them. And, <laughs> and then I put, there I am, and they're naked. I was like, you know, six packs, and I'm yeah. laughing. I posted it on Facebook, and I said to my friends, after walking 20,000 steps, I needed to be carried to my room. And my, <laughs> so, wow. so, you just you have to do what is happening to you you have to do this you have to embrace life you you have to it's nice to observe life right you can look and you can see somebody enjoying your life you can cheer them on and say go for it yeah. so i will never say don't do it i love to see people su succeed i love success for others yeah i noticed I, I noticed that about you i read that in your on your instagram page which is your your team you talk about team Yes, you have to push the people. Like even to this day, the people that I worked with, the younger generation, I worked with in the bank. We still go out to dinner, like 10, 12 of us. They're still on Instagram. We say, oh, it's time for dinner. And we would go to have dinner somewhere. So, and I am the oldest, of course, being the manager at the time. You're, but, the, le you're the leader of the pack. It is, but it's the, the joy of, of watching people. So it's like your mom seeing you're successful and that's what they want you to do. And... So there are little things you have to learn in life. And one of the things I practice, really, I don't, if I have an, a, a work person, somebody to come and do some work for me, I do employ to do something. And the person has given you their price. I, I really don't haggle with them. I either say yes, or I say no. But I don't say, well, it's cheaper and la, la, la. I, have no, I don't do that. And I have one reason for doing that. I have three children. 
I don't want anybody to shortchange them for the work that they do. And if I shortchange you, I am setting up a, a step for that to happen to what, what is behind. My grandmother said to my mother, Dorothy, the rope at the back is much longer than the rope at the front. So what you leave behind is much longer. And that is what you have to protect. So I will pay the price or I'll say no. That is amazing. And, I will, and if you say you think it's too much, I say no. I just don't want to do it right now. Because I, I don't want to make them... You, you, don't, want, you, you don't want to devalue them. No, because if I set that as a, a standard, I am asking the universe to do it to my family. That's a great, great... I tell you, man, that is such a great perspective. Well, I hope everybody heard that because I'll, I'm going to save the live and post it up so you can hear it because that really a lot of people need to think like that. Yeah, they just say no. You know, you don't want to pay the price, then don't say, well, it's too expensive. I didn't, you know what, just go, just let it go. Yeah. Because for one thing, you're starting to look like a beggar. And then second to all, if it were you, how would you feel if that person did that to you? But it's worse, you're leaving a, a train behind you and you're telling nature, you're telling energy, you're telling the world, you're telling the universe, treat my children like I treat this person. Yeah, karma comes back to you, right? Yes, or like the golden rule. Choose and treat others as you want to be treated, not as you like, as you want to be treated. So that's what that is my biggest thing. I really that is really passionate about that. That's that's so smart. Very, very, very smart way to be, way to, to think of life and and how to treat others and, and being respectful, showing respect for other people. You can just say no, right? Like you said. You can just say, say no. no. You know, and, uh, and they can ask you if you want to say, you don't say, well, I was, just your, your, your whole body language change, change. Once you start, when you took to that level, your whole body language changes. And that is your energy you're destroying. So and, the person says it's $10,000 and you say, well, I read and you, why, it's so expensive, am I charging too much? And you go, well, well, it's not that, but I didn't want to spend that. And your whole, you said, your, your attitude changed, your words change. Yeah. And that is not good for your energy. That is not good for your karma. And those people actually feel like you disrespected them. And a lot of times those people will not do the work, quality work that you wanted in the first place because you already shortchanged them and cut them down. So. Yeah. Yes. They, don't, they feel like you didn't respect them and appreciate them, no, right? Because you have a train behind you. You don't, you don't want to pay the price. Just say no. Right. Just say no. And or, 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 or I'll think about it, right? Yeah, I'll think about it. You know, and right. if they call you, and, but don't tell them, well, I, and, and cut them to the bone. And then walk in the book of Proverbs, it tells you that. Yeah. They, they cut the person to the bone. And then they walk away. They walk away saying, "Oh, I've got, I made a deal. I got a good deal. Like I, I skinned that person." And you know what? You look at them; they're not any better than you. No. And, and, and those people, some, some of the people. Okay. Sometimes you pay a little bit. I always say to people, I've had this discussion with many people. Some, you, sometimes you got to remember, you can pay cheaper and have cheaper quality. You can pay a little bit more, but get better quality, and it lasts longer. So you gotta, you gotta. Think about what's what matters at that well, time. What is in, you have to always think what is important to you. It's, it, it, there's a lot of ways that comes into play, but for me, that type of stuff that is hard because that person, whether they went to school to learn to do this, um, everything in life has a price, and you need to find a fair price to pay for it. And you don't have to plug the person's eyeball to do that. You don't have to. It's all about respect and respect. It is respect. respecting that they, they work. You cannot do it. If you can't do it, then do it yourself. And, and don't involve and somebody else. 100%. And another point, like, like in the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, talks about circle of influence. That person, oh, that person could become a circle of influence and they can introduce you to people, you, you know, become in, in their circle out of respecting them and their business and what they're offering or their service, right? Or their product. And you develop a great relationship. And maybe you spent, I was telling this to a client of mine, that maybe you spent a little bit more, but the amount that you spent and the quality that you got will bring you 10 times better results in the end. So you're questioning, if you, when people that question every dollar and they, I call them misers, they're such misers, they end up sending that out in the universe, they get that back on well, them in their business. 
I have seen it like when we at, in at the bank. I had two men, and they were two. They were just two, but there were so many people. So the months were thirty one days, and they had some GIC that matured for thirty thirty days. But we had it for thirty one days for August or whatever the months had thirty one days, and they would be there the next morning, and they have spent the whole night doing all the calculation. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of it, it's 25 cents. So I, it got to the point. You know what I, I used to do? I would just open my wallet and say, hey, Mr. Smith, hey, Mr. This, here's your 25 cents. Because it was a lot cheaper for me in time. It wow. would cost me $20, $20 to have one of the staff do that for each, for each, each of one of them that can. But I also lived to see. There was one night, song asleep in my bed. The phone is ringing and it's the fraud department. And they said, do you know this customer? I said, oh, yeah. Um, well, right now, we just froze his account because he's at um, that casino. Um, casino Rama. No, the other one, the W. Ni the Niagara. Niagara? Oh, Woodbine. Woodbine. Oh, Woodbine. Woodbine. Yeah. And, and I'm and using a lot of money. I said, what? I don't think so. He said, so should we freeze? I said, yes, freeze. So the next day I went in, and when I came in, they said to me, there is a lady here. And she wants to, and she's angry, and she's really fuming, fuming, and she's talking about this customer. I said, okay. So she, his wife died. He was coming for that 25 cents for years and years and years. Oh, and he had like 300,000. The wife died, and he was so devastated. A woman in the apartment building, and friend got friendly with him. I said, I will cook for you, and I'll do your shopping for you. So he saw with God his wife. He gave her his, his debit card. And she fleeced him by doing, going to the casino. She was the one at the casino at three in the morning playing the wheels or whatever she was doing. So when they froze her, she realized somebody found out. So she came and he will starve to death and all of that. So then the next thing we knew, we said, we're not releasing the funds. She went and she went and she got a lawyer to, to get him to make a will in her favor. But we called, we knew he had a son. So we called the son and got the son to, go to there and, and the son stopped it. But that day he was fighting for 25 cents. And at the end of it, when his wife passed away, he didn't care about the 300,000 he worked so hard for. So that's yeah. what people have to understand. It's, life is a, a funny thing. You have to give, you know, you have to take it with a little bit more respect. That, that, you. That's your last thing. That was, those are your last words. I hope so. Life, life is what you just said. Life is funny. <laughs> Yeah, it is. You have to take, you have to give it a little bit of respect. Like 100%. Yeah. It's been a, a real pleasure and an honor, Tessa. Uh, thank you very much it's for only, sharing. Only an hour and a half. It wasn't bad. Thank you. It, really it was amazing. I had a lot of questions for you. I know. I, hope you answer, I answered all of them. Yes, you did. All of them. And you were so gracious. And, and it's really, really kind of you to spend this time in to you share all your years of wisdom and and all your knowledge with everybody here if you'd like if you'd like to you know say any last words to everybody and maybe tell them where they could reach you uh your, your maybe mention your book again if anybody's yeah. interested your IG handle they can follow you i'm going to put it in the post i'm going to save the live and i'm going to post up all your contact information anyways Okay, well, but they, they, they can just test them every morning blessings and you'll find everything. And the other book is Controlling the Deck Monster. It's two different pages, but I just post stuff on the um, Deck Monster book. Amazing. And I'll share, I'll send the video over to you once I save it. Thank you. That would be lovely. And then I can post it on YouTube. I'm getting into YouTube. Yes. Listen, I, I look forward to the future with, uh, I, you know, 2021. And I'm so happy I did that with you. Yes. Because you know, not everybody wants to do a live. I guess I, I come on a bit strong, so they go, oh, no. <laughs> but I got Rosie and Susie and Angela to do one and Yoko. You're going to, you're going to just going to build it, you know, take your time and enjoy I, it. I, I'm enjoying it. So enjoy every minute because you have a lot to share and it's uh it's a really powerful tool and you have, you have years and years of wisdom and knowledge to share with so many people. So I am very grateful that I got a chance to ask you all these questions Trust me, I could probably have a hundred more because I only went through a quarter of your your Instagram uh, very quickly. But I'm sure over the years, uh, um, 
you know, of our friendship, I'll be able to ask you more questions and, and, learn, is, and learn. You did really well, though. You got so much information. You did. That's amazing. You really did good research. That thank you. Helpful. Thank you. I, that, if you ask anybody about me, I just, I like to know people. I like to get to know people. Learn. I like to learn deep, in a deeper level of who they are and what their morals are. What's, what's their values? What, what, what's their purpose? Because that, that inspires me to be a better person. Because if I can take some, some knowledge and wisdom from this life, I can share that with others. And that's, like you said, teaching is the next step, the next teaching level, is, right? Always the next step. Don't be afraid to share what you know, because yeah. it always comes back. I was surprised when you said I was kind. And I'm saying, how did he get kindness? Which is true though, I am a kind person. I wonder where you would get kindness from. Kind. I, I read how something you, about all of that. How you found the how you found kindness? I was reading something about you. You did a post about kind-hearted joy. I could come up with probably another twenty or thirty things about about you and your your character and uh, who you that, are. That because I like to get in detail. Because here's the thing: um, I'm about to do a podcast in 2021 with somebody, and we were doing we were going through what we're gonna do. And I said, you know what's more important than what we're going to do? Like, you know, planning it out and the gas and the, uh, what it's going to be about, the purpose. I said, what's more important is, do we know, me and that person and gentleman, do we know what our core values are? Do they match up and align? And he was like, I never thought about that. I said, listen, if your core values and mine don't align, I'm going to go one way and you're going to go another. We have to be on the same page. So, and then how can we attract guests? with the same core value as us. We have to align with, you know, we have to know ourselves to align with others. So I wanted to know you to see how we were aligned, right? When, when we were aligned from being Catholics. <laughs> from, from, being, from being Catholic? Yes. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah, but so you we see, start, we but you see there. <laughs> yes, but when I, when I first met you, I forget how I heard about you either through Angela I think Angela or, or Evan Car no, I think it was Angela maybe, or Evan Carmichael, somebody. And I heard that you were a Christian, you're Catholic. I said, ah, and, but then I heard you speak. There's different levels of faith, right? There's some people that are faith, but they're, you have, you encompass many, m many um, perspectives. First of all, I came from fine. I learned finance. I went into finance. You came from the banking industry. So we share similarities. You're a Christian, Catholic. You're now in this space that I'm in and, and learning how to market and all that. So we, ha we share many, many similarities. Yeah. So I, I, and I also did a lot of um, other stuff like entrepreneur. I had my own businesses a lot and sold them, build them, sold them. So yeah. like that. But the, the thing that you were talking about your friend and saying that you have to find out what his core values are. Um, so, because you're going to have two different type of followers, you know that, right? Yeah, if right. The core, if the core values are not aligned, and right. how, you, how are you going to do that? And, and plus guests. Like, I, I want to uh, attract good, like, not, I don't like that word. I, look, I want to attract great quality guests to the show that have great stories. But I, I don't, I also want to stick to my morals and the person I am. I don't want to bring on people that are promoting uh drug use because i'm not into that that's not the person i am you know to each his own i don't i don't you know whatever you do you do but i don't want to be a part of that i don't want to promote that so i there's some beliefs that i have that i i have to stick true to and i won't bend on that right that's true you have to you cannot you cannot let that go so people's core value always surface though you know you will always get it somebody can cloak it but yeah after a while there's always a small win that pulls the cloak off and you see the true person. It's like, you know, this the a, sheep yeah. a wolf in sheep's clothing. I was t telling my friend that the other day. You know. So I, use you that, was, I use that line all the time. Yeah, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yes. So you, you would come across that. And, and you, we all do, though, because every day is a learning day for me. Yeah. Every day is a learning day. and, and but, learning, but learning more about like uh, and every day is a learning day about learning but i try to make a learning day to learn more about myself so but i can self-reflect if you don't know if you if you don't know that that person like 
I, I tell people I know all my faults. That doesn't mean I'm going to admit them to you, but I yeah. do know them. Right, so, right. Right. So that's one of the things. So you have the only way you get to know yourself is to have time in silence and stillness. Right, you right. You must make time for silence and stillness. And, the, and this is that time. This is that time for that's all of I mean. us. <laughs> the world gave it to us. COVID came and it said, here, stop rushing, stop. Yeah. Get on the Christmas train. Get on the Christmas train. Yeah. And, yeah. and take the time. So. But Wonderful. I won't keep you. I'm sure you're starving. I had my dinner already, so I'm good. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat. I, I thank you again. I look forward to reconnecting and sharing, you know, uh, your journey and, and our journey together. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that. I yeah, think I, it'll be great. I know our paths cross for a reason. So uh, I want to say Merry Christmas to you and your family. Oh, yeah, that's true. God, God bless you. You're a blessing to the world, to all of us. And, uh, and be safe and stay healthy, Tessa. I really that's appreciate it. Cool. I appreciate your time and value your time. And I value you taking the time to help me out, right? Because I wanted to do this. And Anything I, I can I'm do. I'm glad you chose me because it was a nice, a nice thing. Anything. I love, I love how you you do you do your IG lives. I was interested in that, so that's why I, I always listen. And I listen to everybody. I, I know, I, I know. Going, because everybody has a story to tell. You yeah. need to, you need to, you need to go in and check and listen to that. And, and that's what I, that's what I admire about you because a lot of older people they're not they're not open and receptive to learning. They're not. They're very stuck. They think they know. They think they know it all. And unfor yeah. unfortunately, in my in my my neck of the woods, like coming from Italian, my father's Italian. I have a lot of Italian relatives and people, family that they think they know it all. And when they talk to the younger generation, they talk to them like they don't know nothing. But well, really, like really fault, that is that is most cultures. They do yeah. that, right? But that's but right. like my daughter, the next generation. To be honest, like I'm mentoring some younger people. They know they know way more than me. Well, they, know they, do. Way... they do, and you, and the reason why I am like that, I have my 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 friends, uh, uh, a core set of friends. But my I I, I mentor more people that, that are in their thirties and maybe in their forties than anybody else. I see. So that's one of the reasons I'm like that, and I I try to make sure they enjoy. They understand what the point where they are in life, how important it is to really savor that time. And but but you you it. but you simplify a lot of the stuff. You're very simple. You're you have a, a demeanor about you that's calm. That's maybe your grandmother, your your mother. You know, you raise children. It's your demeanor, your personality. It's very like easygoing, pleasant. Like that's it, what you think. <laughs> so. I'm that that is true, but I, I I like if I'm not happy in a in a situation, you will know. I would yeah, say, of course. But the body language and the attitude will know, and yes. and, and bet you, I will not repeat it. Be again. Because you're authentic, you're real, you're truthful. That's just you know? you're a because woman of integrity, truth, truthfulness. I so. so, I I love all these arcades, and I I try to to live within them. So thank you so much for doing that. We have to listen, like you said, wisdom comes knowledge, but also wisdom. For me, wisdom is about integrity. It's about honesty and being integr and integrity. Nowadays, I, I, a lot of business people in business don't lead with enough integrity, enough tr honesty and integrity. And that's the number one thing, because if you're a liar or, or many people, they over promise and under deliver. Okay. Well, well, guess what? Everybody's going to start from page one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody so. is going to be at page one. It doesn't matter who you are, yeah. what, where you were, what, when COVID hit. COVID brought everybody, because this is the first time in a long time, the whole world is in the same place at the same time. Yes. And we, are, and we have to all work together to yes. somehow come out of it. So. We're all, listen, you know what I say to people around me? Because I had people, you're on my live today, and people say, why are you around? All, how do you know all these Iranian stuff? I said, listen, what does it really matter? Whether I'm Canadian, Chinese, like English, whatever, we're all going in the same ground at the end you of the day. People got mad at me when, when in 2016 when Trump was running, and I said to people, he's going to win. And I said, I said, look at him. I said, he's the only person that believes he's going to win. And then this, bar, this guy from Australia, um, Jonathan Swan did a, an interview with him and he said something and, and I said, I knew that. 
he has the copy of the book written by Norman Vincent Peale on his desk, The Power of Positive Thinking. And Jonathan Swan said that is his Bible. He believes in that book by Norman Vincent Peale, wow. The Power of Positive Thinking. And I said, do everybody, I, I'm not saying it was good. I'm just saying, if you believe, I, I am not saying the man was good. I'm saying that he believed in himself. Yes. And, and when everybody else was not, he was consistently believing in himself. So all you have to, his belief was so strong. But then I found out, I knew about that book. It came out in the 60s. I think I have a copy somewhere here. But it's, that he, he, was a, he was a preacher. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the power, and he wrote about the power of um, positive thinking. And he, he was in New York. And he tells his story of how he started and he had a choice to either go to California and New York or stay in New York. And he said he stayed up all night praying and he said to God, I am not getting off my knees until you tell me where I should go. And that is part of his forward. And he said, California is nice and warm. But he said when he got up, he knew he had to stay in New York. Norman Vincent Peale or Trump? No, Norman Vincent Peale. Yes, was. Norman Vincent Peale. Yeah, that's I what wasn't sure if you're talking about Napoleon Hill, Trump, or no, Norman Vincent Norman Hill. Vincent Hill wrote the book that Trump uses. uses yes, uh, the, power, a, the Power of Positive Thinking. The Power of Positive Thinking. Apparently, Jonathan Swan said that. That yes. means to him. Hi, and Angela. Then, Angela's here. Hello, oh, Elizabeth. Hello, guys. Elizabeth. <laughs> we're just going to bed, Angela. Good night. <laughs> yes, we're just finishing, but I'm going to save the life, uh, Angela, if you want to watch it after. But Angela, uh, Thanks for dropping in. So amazing. You know what? We'll, we'll for sure have many discussions in the future because uh, uh, the politics uh, world is, that's a whole different ballgame. I know. But you see when somebody takes religion and put into it, how it comes out. It's... Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Everybody, listen, you know what? I had somebody arguing with me the other day on a live about uh, my perspective on COVID and this and that. And I, I diffused the situation. It was a lawyer in the UK. I diffused the situation. I agreed with her, and then I turned her around. We became friends at the end, and she actually became, she was such a very amazing person. And I realized in the end that she actually has, like, some not good feelings about what is going on. So she wasn't so um, against everything as, as she seemed in the beginning. So because I learned to be diplomatic and, oh, true. and take my time, we actually, we had a great discussion, and it was one of mutual respect. That's good. You, but you have to. In life, yeah, you yeah. have those two. This, yeah, because you respect. have your opinion. I have mine. But yeah. it, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I'm going to be disrespectful to you. We have mm. to respect each other, listen to one another, and, and let the cards fall where they may be at the end. That's it. And learn to and still shake hands at the end and have a meal together. That's, that's what it is. And when you cannot do that, then we have lost hope in everything. And that's, they teach you that in sportsmanship. Be a great sportsman, right? Uh-huh. Be a, be a gracious loser. Even though I don't like losing, I'm still a gracious loser. If I lose, I shake your hand. We have a drink and... What? Merry Christmas. Bye. Take care. We're we'll losing ourselves. Bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. And thank Every you. Time. Thank you, everybody, so much for following and listening to us tonight. Merry Thanks. Christmas to you and all your families. And be you safe too. and stay healthy. Okay. See you online. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye, Angela. Bye.